glassy seas, but an ominous sky greeted the Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team out today deep in the Gulf of Cagliari, the Golfo de Castedu in local Sardinian, and with a forecast for the wind to increase significantly, but some debate and conflict over quite how much and when. It was a tricky day for the team's meteorologists. It was even harder actually on the water, as the team docked out from their quite astonishingly well-appointed base in the port of Cagliari at midday having spent the morning waiting for the wind. Obviously a strange day, first no breeze at all and then uh, breeze, easily breeze and swell. Can you talk us, like, yeah. are you happy with your day? Yeah, we went out, uh, we knew it was, the breeze was coming at some stage, we didn't expect a, a, big, a quick build uh, like this. So we went out with the J1 just for, uh, for fun mainly because uh, there was no wind at all and then uh, when we dropped the J1, we went straight to the J4 because uh, we read uh, more over 18 knots already. So when we start sailing upwind, uh, we, we have an average of uh, 18, uh, 19 knots. And uh, so we did a few takes upwind and then uh, we decided to bear away to come close to shore uh, to try to find a little bit less swell. And uh, we did bear off over uh, in over 20 knots uh, and um, it was fine. but. Um, uh, with such a small boat when it's so wavy and, uh, and with this wind direction it's getting uh, bumpy pretty quickly, you know it's getting hard and, uh, and you know as well if you use low, you, you slow down too much, uh, you're gonna, uh, I mean, there is a chance you could flip over, which, which was uh, part of the game. We'd uh, ride the boat back uh, pretty quickly and we could, uh, we could uh, the plan was to keep sailing but then the, bri the breeze was uh, for uh, more than five minutes, over 21, 22 knots, and we decided to, to drop the sail, mainly for the wave and not for the wind. So we did a uh, few checks uh, on the way back, and uh, we discovered with this state, uh, with this, uh, sorry, wind direction, we could sail a little bit closer to shore. So it's a lesson taken, uh, but it was good. I think we had a pretty solid week uh, after uh, the damage we had uh, to, the, to the mast, and. Uh, Every day you spend, every minute you spend in the water is a lesson taken. So, is there any damage today? No, no. We could, uh, we could, uh, we could uh, keep sailing, and uh, and again, that was the plan. But again, uh, I had a talk, uh, a chat with uh, with uh, Jimmy and Ruggi, and I asked them, uh, "What do you guys think? We could sail, but the problem again, when uh, when uh, when it's so bumpy and you touch the the." The water, uh, if, you, if you just slow down, the first thing is uh, broaching and then uh, the problem of this boat, you cannot fall of enough in terms of speed that the, the board drop, you know, when you are at low speed and that is where the boat capsized, but I mean, it's fine. So regarding the crew, we've seen some days with six crews on board and four. Is that something you've been working on? Yeah, yeah. The, the, that was the plan since they want to go with more ballast, basically, and more right in moment. And uh, we're going to keep uh, playing that uh, until the end. And um, we're going to see the big guys as well to, to start jumping on board to, to get used to the speed because these boats are pretty fast. We reached the other day over 44 knots, and uh, so it's good fun. So, considering the conditions in Barcelona, would you say you've learned something? With well, obviously, as much time you spend in wavy condition, better it is for uh, the long-term uh, goal. But we know we are sailing in a small boat, so we know the limit of the boat, uh, the size of the boat is, uh, is pretty clear. So we know we can sail easily up to 0 0.7, 0 0.8 meters as well. Above that is... Uh, as a kind of uh, survival mode, but it's always uh, good. I mean, upwind is not a problem, it's mainly downwind, obviously, because you're going faster, you sail higher, and it's easier to, to lose the control, but, uh, but again, it's part of the game. This is the Sailing World on Water for December 9, 2022. Highlights of the sport, globally, in the last seven days. It was a welcome sight to see Sir Ben Ainsley leading from the front today out in a very placid and peaceful, if somewhat chilly Palma Mallorca, and bringing to this America's Cup cycle a new acronym that is straight out of Formula One, we presume. In interview, Ainsley repeatedly referred to the HMI, the human-machine interface, that crossover point where technology must relent to the human touch and vice versa. Ben, if you had to design a day for Totes, and it seems like today on 
Palmer Bay was like a mill pond for you. It was virtually perfect, wasn't it? It was. It was a perfect conditions for, for tow testing. Not hardly any wind and, and dead flat water. And it's amazing how clear the water is out here as well. I think for me that was a, probably the biggest thing that's, that stuck out. <laughs> the clarity of the water so perfect for tow testing perfect now what were you what were your objectives when you went out there today we know the boats bristling with sensors was it all about data gathering or are you still checking the boat yeah a bit, bit of both really um, certainly picking up some data from the sensors and also trying to get the a bit of manual flight control a bit of autopilot control uh, with an eye on getting sailing hopefully next week now, four of you on the boat today, yourself, Giles, uh, Luke, Parkinson, and one more, Lee McMillan. Lee McMillan. So what was everybody doing on the boat? You and Giles were in the, in the helming stations. What, what does everybody do on, on this small boat? Yes, yeah, so you have, have two, two helms and, um, and obviously two, two pilots, two trimmers. But, you know, depending where you are on the, on the course and what maneuver you're doing, Pretty much everyone get, gets involved. Certainly, you know, the, the helms get involved with, with different controls on the yacht. So, again, the HMI is pretty important and just trying out some different setups and some different um, personnel using different HMI at different times. So, I think that would be an interesting feature as we develop with sailing these boats and then getting into the 75 four of you on the boat but i feel like there was probably a lot more people involved in the testing today are you live linked back to the mercedes base in uh, in the uk yeah we we are both both here in palmer and also back to brackley and that's going to be impo an important um, shift for us i think trying to get that data back to, to brackley and all of our engineers there they're used to it in formula one i mean we've done it a little bit with the cup we did it in bermuda um, getting a lot of data back to Portsmouth, where we were based then. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's working really well for us. That, that link up's fine. Today we saw, I think, double figures, 10 runs, maybe nine or 10, maybe one more at the end. Um, top speeds were kind of around 30 on the rib as we were trying to kind of match your speed. Is, is that what it felt like to you, speed-wise? Yeah, we were working for a, a range of different speeds. Actually, probably the most interesting stuff was when we were more on the close to stalling the foils, so, you know, around the 15 knot range, something like that. Um, but, you know, we're trying lots of different speeds, lots of different setups, as you can imagine, just trying to get a, get the data for the designers, but also from, a, as I said, from an HMI perspective, how Mercedes on board the yacht were able to control the boat through different, different speeds. You come away from this day feeling happy. I feel like you've you've probably gathered more data today than on on the previous times the boat's been out towing. Yeah, it was a good day in terms of d data gathering from a tow testing perspective. And now, like I said, we're looking forward to getting in. Yeah, you know, shift after that now is to get into sailing operations and then start pushing the boat through that and all the time getting that critical feedback and data for the design team. The, the lack of ability to use the towing mast, has that impacted your ability to gather the data, do you think? Yeah, the only thing that's really impacted is we, with a towing mast, you can get some towing data with just one foil in the water. Uh, so that, that's, that's the one thing we can't do about a towing mast, but we'd rather have a proper mast than a towing mast when it comes to sailing. That's a very good way of putting it. So out sailing next week, that's the hope. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're working towards now. Uh, guys have been working really, really hard to get the uh, HMI going for that and get the rig up, sails up and get, get the boat ripping around Palmer Bay. That's what we're looking forward to. Me too. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. It's leg zero, which means Team Malaysia is on the way back across the Atlantic to Lanzarote, Spain to ready from their next race, the Ocean Race the crude race around the world starting in January. This how difficult it is to film life on a racing yacht.
It's also day 10 of the Malaysia Sea Explorer delivery across the Atlantic to Alicante and the crew is finally foiling downwind. After what has seemed like endless weather delays over the past couple of months, finally Horonuku got to stretch its legs on a dry Lake Gairdna, with breeze that is edging closer into the required zone for world record attempts. Yeah, on zero five should be your heading. Copy, go below you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Finally to be able to sail on a dry surface um, is, is incredible with a decent amount of runway. So, you know, we've sailed, we only sailed in sort of up to 20 knots previously and to have a bit more runway now on a really beautiful surface just makes a huge difference and it's a totally different craft to sail. Um, absolutely feel like I'm getting through the gearbox well now and well over 180 kilometres an hour, over 190 kilometres an hour. We've been over 200 kilometres an hour run after run after run. So feel like I'm just sort of getting into sixth gear a couple of times, which is really nice. So pushing over 200 k's an hour is, is a really nice feeling and the craft feels like it's got plenty more left in it. So um, I just have to be uh, brave enough to sort of keep pushing it. Hopefully we get some more wind that I can do that as well. This is the onboard camera when the land yacht reaches 200 kilometers an hour. It's December, and that means it's time for the big boats to race around Sydney Harbour. The John-winning junior skip at Maxi Yacht, Andu Comanche, produced a masterclass of high-speed sailing to win line honours in the Solar's Big Boat Challenge on Sydney Harbour today. Meanwhile, the Jim Cooney skipper and owned Volvo 70 Willow was declared the overall winner. Under glorious sun and in southerly 15-knot winds that suited perfectly, Andu Comanche was first to finish the two-lap harbour course. After reaching a maximum speed of 27 knots, she crossed the finish line off Rushcutters Bay in 53 minutes 58 seconds. In Andu Comanche's wake and in order were the three other maxes, Christian Beck's Law Connect in 55 minutes 18 seconds, Peter Harburg's Blackjack, skippered by Mark Bradford, 
in 56 minutes 35 seconds, and the Oatley family-owned Hamilton Island Wild Oats, skippered by Mark Richards, in 59 minutes 27 seconds. We had a good day. We started where we wanted to start, said Winning Junior. We just want wind. We were lucky that we had a nice reach off the start to be able to be first at the bottom mark. We are thankful to the weather gods for giving us that wind. First to finish behind the Maxes was Willow, fifth in 1 hour 4 minutes 8 seconds, followed by the Grant Warrington skippered bottom 80 Stefan Racing, 10 seconds further behind, then Anthony and David Johnston's Reichel a Pew 72 UIM group, skippered by Marcus Ashley Jones, in 1 hour 7 minutes 39 seconds. The Duncan Hines skippered Reichel a Pew 66 Alive, owned by Philip Turner, was just another 2 seconds behind, followed by Whisper, David Griffith, No Limit, David Gotze, and Moneypenny, Sean Langman, in that order. It was a really exciting race. We had a solid start. We were quite happy with our position, said Cooney afterwards, adding that while everything went to plan in the race overall, the crew recovered well, after one hiccup, a furling issue relatively early in the race. The Solar's Big Boat Challenge is one of the final lead-up events to the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. While the Rolex Sydney Hobart is a vastly different race, the Solar's Big Boat Challenge was still witnessed by a strong spectator fleet that provided a superb taste of what to expect for the Boxing Day start. After some exciting jostling for position, the fleet of 11 boats set off from Point Piper, with bows virtually aligned towards the first mark at Canny Point. Law Connect was the fastest off the start, but soon Andu Comanche picked up pace to sweep by and take a commanding lead. Andu Comanche reached the first mark after about 11 minutes. On the upwind leg to Shark Island, Andu Comanche extended her lead to 43 seconds over Law Connect, followed by Black Jack. Hamilton Island Wild Oats fell off the pace to turn at Shark Island a little more than two minutes down. Over the last lap of the race, Andu Comanche consolidated her lead for a trouble-free run to the finish after passing the Canny Point and Shark Island marks once more. The Solar's Big Boat Challenge also decided the outcome of the 2022 Australian Maxi Championship, which had 10 boats competing, 4 in the Maxi Division and 6 in the Mini Maxi Division. After last weekend's opener, the Cabbage Tree Island Race and the two passage races in Sydney on Monday, Hamilton Island Wild Oats, Andu Comanche and Law Connect were level on seven points in the Maxi Division Online Honours. As a result of the Solar's Big Boat Challenge, Maxi Division Honours went to Andu Comanche on eight points, from Law Connect on nine points, and then Hamilton Island Wild Oats and Black Jack on 11 and 13 points respectively. Law Connect was the Maxi Division's overall winner on 8 points, followed by Hamilton Island Wild Oats on 10 points, Black Jack on 10.5 points, and Andu Comanche on 12.5 points. In the Mini Maxi Division, URM Group was crowned champion on 6 points, ahead of Willow, Alive, Whisper, Moneypenny, and No Limit. The boat is well prepared. We've been working on it for a couple of years now, said URM Group owner Anthony Johnston afterwards. We sailed pretty conservatively. We thought we would take a cautious approach. We had a few points up our sleeves. We're happy with where the boat is. The crew is going really well. We are quite confident, ahead of the 2022 Rolex Sydney Hobart. It was a rather welcome late morning crane in and a relaxed 1 p.m. dock out for an afternoon in Pesacola that promised little for the crew of Patriot with a forecast of a dying breeze, but delivered rather a lot. Hi, my name is Juan Meseguer. I'm the cell designer of America Magic for the next America's Cup. Nice, Juan. Uh, can you tell us how everything went today? Today was a really, really good day, actually. Uh, it was very marginal. Uh, taking off or foiling conditions and we took a lot of uh, good actions and good maneuvers out of the, today which we thought the wind was going to be really bad but actually was really really good. We had a couple of pauses, were there any breakages today? No, we had some issues as always you know with some of the buttons but nothing major and we, for sure we're going to be fixing for tomorrow. Okay, we saw some new faces on board today, who were they and uh, what are their positions? 
I think they are one of the cyclists. Actually, I met them today at lunch. That was my first time, to be honest. I think they are trying new people and new cyclists and, and basically understand better the cycling system and how to operate. Okay. Um, the, the diamond shape uh, cutouts in the aft of the mast, uh, what function do they serve? Uh, I cannot tell you, but it's uh, helping with some of the maneuvers and takeoffs and helping to understand better a lot of the aerodynamics. But to be honest, um, it's not much that every other team has done in the past. Okay. Um, I know, I think I remember last time it was air was pumped through there. Can you comment on that? I don't think there's any air coming out of that, to be honest. <laughs> um, all right, the, um, the, the trimmers always seem to be in the top hole of the, of the glue plate adjuster. Is there a problem with taking out twist, or why are we always in the top hole? No, we're just learning how to do better with the crew board and how to pick the right position and basically we're playing around, tooking around just to see what is the best uh, position for the future. Okay. Uh, is, is the tack of the jib adjustable under on, on going underway? I think uh, most of the teams have a cheap cutting arm and there's nothing new and yeah, we're just a little bit of cutting arm. It's part of the selling film okay. circuit. What are the, the hot button focus points for now until Christmas? Uh, basically, this is our systems period. We're going to make sure every, all, every single system works as, as best as, as we can and improve every other day until we got it perfectly for the next one. If there was a such thing as a typical day in the Cup, what would it be for you? This could be a typical day in Barcelona. <laughs> so, for us it was a really good selling day. We got a good, really good maneuvers where we jive very nicely and tack very nicely. So, I think what, it's very good. What kind of, like, what are you, boxes do you need to check throughout the day? Uh, it's all about systems, to be honest, and uh, we just put a list of priorities for the day. We're going to try this system and other system, and we're just taking off and making sure they all work for the next, next, you know, just how to improve it daily. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Hola, es aquí Juan Meseguer en Pensacola. Hemos tenido un día fantástico, condiciones un poco, casi que no se conseguía foilear, pero lo hemos conseguido. Hemos hecho un gran día navegando y estamos muy contentos de haber sacado provecho del día de hoy. The huge racing trimaran spindrift sails of change is 30 meters by 30 meters, and it is getting ready to start the Jules Verne Trophy race non-stop around the world. Do you know what the crew's standby days are like? What do they do while waiting for the D-Day? Remember at any time, they may be required to get on board and start the clock. C'est vrai que d'être à Brest déjà c'est une étape importante. Hein. On a hâte d'avoir maintenant une météo. C'est pas pour les prochains jours donc euh, c'est clair que faut s'occuper. Mais bon déjà il y a les fichiers météo. Hein. On a une mise à jour des fichiers euh, deux fois par 24 heures, une fois le matin, une fois le soir. Ça occupe une, une bonne partie du temps et après c'est aussi comme tout sportif, hein, continuer à s'entretenir, euh, avoir l'équipe aussi tous les 15 jours euh, à se retrouver ensemble pour faire du sport ensemble. Euh, voilà, nous on a plein aussi de, de projets philanthropiques euh, qu'il faut s'occuper, euh, des activités professionnelles, donc euh, c'est bien chargé. Euh, L'important c'est d'avoir une fenêtre, maintenant euh, c'est le propre des records, il faut être patient. On est déjà content que le bateau soit là, c'est une, une bonne étape de fête. Euh, J'ai une petite routine euh, quotidienne forcément sur la météo, puisque avec Yann et Jean-Yves, on est en charge de décider quand est-ce qu'on en part ou ne part pas. Donc il y a déjà ça, tous les 15 jours on organise un point avec, euh, avec CLS sur les, sur les icebergs. Et autour de ça, on a des séances de sport euh, à la base de Saint-Philibert. J'ai essayé de, de recharger les batteries à fond avant de avant de partir à Retour du Monde. C'est une période assez, assez particulière parce qu'il euh, faut effectivement à la fois être prêt à partir euh, à 4 jours à peu près, euh, avec son sac prêt, et, euh, ses affaires prêtes à partir et puis en même temps euh, bah, on regarde tous la météo donc on sait très bien, euh, on est capable de voir à une semaine, 10 jours s'il y a une fenêtre qui, se, qui arrive ou pas et donc euh, bah, il faut à la fois occuper son temps effectivement et puis en même temps être prêt et rester euh, sur le qui-vive, donc c'est pas évident. Faut, globalement, on essaye de s'occuper en faisant du sport, en continuant à vivre normalement, mais euh, tout en sachant qu'il y a ce, ce petit truc derrière euh, qu'il faut être prêt à dégainer rapidement. Quoi. Donc c'est pour bon, moi c'est une forme d'habitude parce que c'est mon, je crois que c'est mon huitième. Ben, on va occuper le stand-by en se reposant, en essayant de faire, de continuer à faire du sport. Euh, et puis euh, forcément, on a un œil sur, sur les routages. Euh, et on guette euh, évidemment euh, le moindre signe que la route euh, 
euh, vers, euh, vers les mers du sud s'ouvre à nous. Euh, pour l'instant, ce n'est pas tout à fait encore le cas, mais euh, voilà, on, a, on a forcément tendance à regarder le matin euh, les, les routages météo. Me reposer, faire de, des forces, du temps en famille à fond, et puis euh, bah, regarder la météo forcément un peu tous les jours. Weather, sports training and other activities. The crew of the Maxi Trimaran Sales of Change has plenty to do before the start. Now, here's Donna. Donc maintenant qu'on est à Brest et que le bateau est ici, dans la tente, je veux continuer à mener mes actions philanthropiques. Mais surtout, ce que je me réjouis, si j'ai un peu de temps pour moi, c'est pour m'occuper de mes animaux. On a beaucoup d'animaux qu'on qu sauve euh, et qu'on qu récupère à la maison. Et là, je sais qu'on a plusieurs, euh, plusieurs types d'animaux qui vont arriver avant, euh, avant la fin de l'année, avant l'hiver. Et donc, je vais aussi m'occuper de ça et ça va me vider la tête et ça va me faire du bien. Eh bien, on va regarder la météo tous les jours et espérer que ça parte tous les jours. Et puis, euh, bah, on va se maintenir au courant, se maintenir euh, en forme, surtout. Et puis, il bah, petit, y a un petit travail psychologique permanent à faire, prêt à partir à euh, n'importe quel moment. Euh, mon temps de stand-by, c'est de, déjà de rester en forme, parce qu'on euh, sait que des certaines années, ça peut être long, le stand-by. J'espère que cette année, non, mais, euh, mais ça peut être long. Donc, euh, faire du sport avec toute l'équipe. Une partie de l'équipe, euh, ceux qui habitent pas en Bretagne, on fait du sport ensemble. Et aussi profiter de la famille, des enfants, et de faire du bricolage qu'on n'a pas pu te faire à la maison. Donc voilà, mais et aussi regarder les fichiers météo, même si on n'est pas navigateur, on a tendance tous les matins à regarder ce qui se passe pour voir ce qu'on a hâte de partir. Ouais. Euh, moi, je, ouais, je pense que je vais assez facilement m'occuper en tout cas. Non, bah déjà, euh, on va regarder un peu la météo. Euh pas tous les jours mais presque et euh, après bah non non bah c'est sympa on a quand même pas mal d'entraînement physique euh, dans la semaine donc euh, voilà continue à se préparer physiquement je suis pressé de partir euh, mais, mais bon s'il faut attendre jusque jusque fin janvier on attendra jusque fin janvier mais je vais m'occuper en tout cas ça c'est sûr les journées de stand-by ça, ça dépend des journées mais euh, globalement on peut dire que dans une semaine il va y avoir de l'entretien physique euh, régulier euh, bon, moi je, je suis pas très loin de la, de la base à la Trinité donc euh, je viens régulièrement et je peux, on peut profiter de la salle de musculation. On fait au minimum de, déjà deux séances de musculation à, à la base euh, par semaine. J'aime bien faire des sports un peu nature aussi, euh, que ce soit vélo, de route ou, euh, ou du kite, tranquillement sans, sans aller se blesser, mais naviguer tranquillement en kite et tout. 